More than 35 years. That's how far back Boise State University's relationship goes with the NCAA men's basketball tournament. The school hosted its first first and second round games back in 1983, back when it was called the Pavilion. They've hosted eight times since, the last one just two years ago. And they're scheduled to do it again at Extra Mile Arena in March of 2021. But that plan, like a weak jumper in the paint against Hakeem Olajuwon, well, could be rejected because of a bill that Governor Little signed back in March. The National Center for Transgender Equality, along with a whole slew of others, asked the NCAA to relocate all of their events out of Idaho. And that would include the upcoming championship tournament games slated for next season. It seems like a big ask, but the NCAA, they haven't shied away from stepping into the social issue arena. And that could make this a very real possibility. The letter was sent to the NCAA today, endorsed by 60 organizations, four dozen former and professional athletes, and more than 400 collegiate athletes from across the country, including a coach and runner from Boise State. The National Center for Transgender Equality, who wrote the letter, claims the Fairness in Women's Sports Act is discriminatory. And that actually goes against NCAA policy. NCAA uh, really has explicit rules to ban discrimination so that every young person who wants to play sports can do so. Um, but with HB 500, now that contradicts their policy. So we're asking them to move their tournaments to a place where all athletes can actually participate. Idaho may be the first state in the country to ban transgender athletes from competing as their identifiable gender, but it wouldn't be the first state to face a challenge from the NCAA because of a transgender law. After North Carolina tried to limit transgender access to bathrooms in 2016, the NCAA pulled the men's tournament games from the Tar Heel State the next year. To their credit, they took a stand when North Carolina tried to single out transgender people for harm. Um, and so that this is really uh, consistent, asking them to get out of Idaho as long as this ban is in place, is really consistent with what NCAA has done in other places because to them, they want athletes to play the sport. If you have a ban like this, then their own athletes can't even be protected from harm, even um, when they're in Idaho like this. Not that Idaho isn't trying to take care of it on its own. The Idaho chapter of the ACLU filed a lawsuit in April to keep the law from going into effect on July 1st. But if a legal approach won't work, well, then a fiscal one just might. Because this brings a lot of money into Boise in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we really need transgender young people to feel safe and protected when they're in the care of adults. Um, and if and NCAA has an opportunity to play here, has an opportunity to really stand up for, for trans people. So um, we're really, really appreciative of everything they've done so far. We're optimistic that that they're going to come to to see what's at stake here. And yeah, absolutely. They they have a big opportunity here um, at, at the pocketbook and at public opinion to really show that trans people deserve protection from discrimination, just like any other person in Idaho. People seem to pay attention to the pocketbook. So how much money does a machine like the NCAA tournament pump into the local economy? In 2018, according to the Boise's Visitors and Convention Bureau, they booked eight hotels, 3,500 rooms, and brought in 30,000 people to the tune of around $15 million. And how effective is the NCAA when it comes to these things, maybe changing the laws or some rules? When North Carolina lost those tournament games in March of 2017 because of their bathroom law, the legislature repealed it the following month. We reached out to the NCAA and Governor Little, but we haven't heard back. Boise State did send us this, though, this statement. The school has and will continue to follow NCAA guidance until the new state law goes into effect on July 1st, after which all Idaho universities will follow the new law. The attorney general will lead the defense of the law in coordination with the governor and legislative leadership. So this is still early in the process, of course. The NCAA would be the first to make the next move, and if they still have to decide, by the way, there's still a lot left that they have to figure out over the next couple of months like even if there's going to be a football season this fall.